cybersecurity in the industrial environment. Protection of the OT area. Bastion facilities. Subnetting. Creating subnets. Sometimes it is necessary to divide a network into several subnets. This is achieved by using the subnetting technique. When interconnecting subnets, special care must be taken to avoid so-called broadcast storms. Subnetting, also known as subnetting or subnetwork, is a technique used in local networks to divide an IP network into smaller subnets. This technique allows for better network management, greater efficiency in IP address utilization, and better network security. The subnetting technique is based on dividing an IP network into several smaller subnets, each with its own network address and subnet mask. The subnet mask is used to identify which bits in an IP address correspond to the network address and which bits correspond to the host address. For example, if a company has a class B IP network, e.g., 172.16.0.0, and it wants to create subnets for specific departments, it can use the subnetting technique. Suppose the sales department needs one subnet, while the engineering department needs another. The company could divide the IP network into two subnets. Assigning the network address 172.16.0.0 slash 24 to the sales department and the network address 172.16.1.0 slash 24 to the engineering department. By using the subnetting technique, each subnet has its own range of IP addresses available for devices connecting to it. This helps to avoid IP address conflicts and makes it easier to identify devices on the network. In addition to the above, subnetting is also used to limit the range of broadcast transmissions. In computer networks, when a device sends a broadcast packet, it is transmitted to all devices on the network. If a network is large and has many devices connected, this can cause network congestion and affect network performance, broadcast storm. By dividing the network into smaller subnets, the range of broadcast transmissions is limited. For example, if a company has a class C IP network, e.g., 192.168.1.0 and wants to limit the scope of broadcast transmissions, it can divide the network into four smaller subnets. Each subnet would have its own network address and subnet mask, and devices on each subnet would only receive broadcast packets broadcast within that subnet. Another benefit of subnetting is that it helps improve network security. By dividing a network into smaller subnets, it is possible to apply specific security policies to each subnet, limiting certain devices or users from accessing certain network resources. To create subnets on a local area network, LAN, you must follow these steps. Determine the subnet mask. The subnet mask is a number used to identify which part of an IP address belongs to the network and which part belongs to the host. Selecting an appropriate subnet mask is essential for creating subnets. Divide the network into segments. Once the subnet mask has been determined, you can divide the network into segments. Which will be the subnets? The size of each segment depends on the number of hosts you want to connect to each subnet. Assign IP addresses to each subnet. Each subnet must have a unique IP address that allows hosts on the subnet to communicate with each other and with other subnets. The IP address for each subnet is obtained by applying the subnet mask to the IP address of the original network. Configure network devices. 
Network devices such as routers and switches must be configured to recognize subnets and allow hosts on different subnets to communicate with each other. Verify connectivity. Finally, you must verify that devices on each subnet can communicate with each other, as well as with devices on other subnets and the internet, if necessary. It is important to note that creating subnets can have an impact on network performance, as it can increase the complexity and processing time of network devices. For this reason, care must be taken when creating subnets and ensure that the network is appropriately sized and configured to support the expected traffic load. A broadcast storm occurs on a local area network. LAN, when a large volume of network traffic is transmitted simultaneously, which can overwhelm the network and slow down or disrupt normal data traffic. This can occur when there are a large number of devices connected to the LAN and they all try to access the same resources at the same time. In this case, a broadcast storm is said to occur because the network traffic is widely broadcast on the LAN, affecting all devices connected to it. To prevent such situations, local area networks are often equipped with traffic control systems that limit the bandwidth available to each device or regulate access to network resources. In the case of a broadcast storm on a local area network, LAN, this situation is usually caused by a malfunction or incorrect configuration on the network. Some of the most common causes of a broadcast storm on a LAN are as follows, incorrect network configuration, a network misconfiguration, such as incorrect IP address configuration or lack of network segmentation, can cause a broadcast storm. A malfunctioning network device. If one or more network devices are malfunctioning or faulty, they can send a large number of network packets, causing a network overload. Denial of service. DOS. Attack. A denial of service attack can flood a network with a large number of data packets causing an overload on the network and potentially leading to a broadcast storm. Application errors. Application errors that generate a large amount of network traffic in a short time can cause a broadcast storm on the network. To prevent a broadcast storm on a local area network, it is important to properly configure the network keep network devices in good shape, and have security measures in place to detect and prevent denial of service attacks. There are several measures that can be implemented to prevent a broadcast storm on a local area network, LAN. Some of which are, implement a speed limit. It is important to set a speed limit on the network, so that each device has a maximum bandwidth that it can use. This helps prevent one device or application from using all the available bandwidth and causing a broadcast storm. Configure VLANs. Network segmentation using VLANs, virtual local area networks, helps limit the propagation of network packets to a specific area of the network and prevents these packets from being spread to all parts of the network. Set packet filters. Setting packet filters to limit the traffic entering the network is also an effective measure to prevent a broadcast storm. Update network devices. Keeping network devices up to date and ensuring they are in good health helps prevent errors that can cause a broadcast storm. Implement security measures. It is important to have security measures in place on the network to prevent denial of service. DOS attacks and other types of attacks that can cause an overload on the network. Monitor the network. It is important to monitor the network for possible traffic anomalies, such as an overload of network packets, so that you can act quickly and prevent a broadcast storm. 
By implementing these measures, you can significantly reduce the risk of a broadcast storm on a local area network.